Hello everybody and welcome to the new 120Hz Dell G5 Special Edition Stress Test Results where we will mainly talk about the temperatures and the stability of the laptop in intensive CPU GPU workloads in gaming and productivity. Guys don't skip the video if you are watching this for the first time as I have explained my testing procedure and some technical details which are very important to keep in mind. But before everything a bit of a recap. So Dell launched the Dell G5 with Ryzen 5 4600H and Ryzen 7 4800H paired with the Radeon RX 5600M. They priced it very competitively even in India. The initial reviews were very positive but the public release was a disaster. The laptop almost felt like a beta product riddled with bugs and crashes. Then the laptop went out of stock and it remained like that for quite a long time. In the meantime, Dell and AMD were working together to fix the issues with BIOS updates, video BIOS updates, driver updates, etc. etc. Then after a couple of months or so, Dell relaunched the Dell G5 Special Edition with 120Hz displays for both the variants and once again priced it very competitively at 77,000 rupees and 89,000 rupees. This got everybody very excited once again. But unfortunately, I didn't want to openly recommend it to anyone because I personally didn't test it. And of course Dell wouldn't send me a review unit despite me literally begging them for one. And I'm also quite disappointed there are so many big YouTubers in India couldn't anyone just purchase one and do a full review of it. Anyways so I took upon myself the responsibility to test the laptop despite not being able to own one. This is where I got lucky. So in my discord server which is now over 600 members 5 of them actually have the Dell G5. Two of them have the old 60Hz model and, and, and three of them got the new 120Hz one. And I was able to test two of the 120Hz models. Now the testing was a huge hassle as I was constantly communicating with them over the phone, instructing them how to set up the benchmarks and all. They also gave me remote access to their desktop so that I could properly set up MSI Afterburner and Hardware Info to get the stats. Then they took videos of the benchmarks and sent them to me. And it was way more difficult than it sounds guys, it was a huge hassle. So I am very thankful to Anish and Sumande for, for cooperating with me for this video. Now guys, you can understand it was quite a bit of challenge this way. So I was not able to test all kinds of benchmarks. I did as much as I could in the limited amount of time I had. So what benchmarks did I do and how did I do the benchmarks? So the benchmarks I used are Cinebench R20. Unigen Heaven, 3D Mark Firestrike, Assassin's Creed Origins built-in benchmark and also showed a bit of Hitman 2 gameplay at ultra settings. I'll explain you why I used these tools later when I show you the benchmarks. Now about the benchmarking procedure. So all the benchmarks are done after the laptop has been fully updated by using Dell Update Utility. During all the benchmarks, G mode was enabled that is high performance mode. So I did each benchmark in two ways. One using stock settings with G mode enabled and one using Ryzen controller with G mode enabled. Also each benchmark was done repeatedly to test for you know crashes but there were no crashes. Now why did I use Ryzen controller? I used it because during normal GPU benchmarks temperatures were well under control. However when the laptop was being hit with an all core CPU load that's when the laptop was peaking at over 98 degrees centigrade. So in order to see if this issue can be fixed, I used Ryzen controller. Guys, Ryzen controller is a really awesome software for AMD Ryzen laptops. It's really easy to use and you can tweak all sorts of settings to fine tune your performance according to your needs. And then you can save them to specific profiles and switch between them on the fly. I however didn't have enough time to fine tune Ryzen controller so I basically did one thing which is very simple. I just set up an artificial CPU thermal throttling limit at 92 degrees centigrade and left everything untouched. I saved it in a profile and set it up in such a way so that it auto applies every time. Oh and yeah, don't pay attention to the CPU package power reported by hardware info uh, in GPU or game benchmarks. It is wrongly reported guys because you'll see at times the CPU and GPU are drawing over 230 watts combined which is physically impossible to be provided by the uh, 240 watt AC adapter that is supplied. So ignore that. So that's it now. Let's take a look at the benchmarks. First up let's start with Cinebench R20 multi-core. 
Point to note, I am not showing the single core benchmark because the scores and temperatures were almost the same in either cases. So let's see how the laptop copes up with an all core CPU load and see the temperature in both cases. Guys, only focus on the first temperature column because I forgot to instruct the person over the phone to clear the history of minimum and maximum temperature represented by the second and third columns. So please ignore that. Now notice how at the beginning, in both cases, the temperatures are very similar. But in the stock settings, you will see that the laptop peaks at a much higher temperature of over 98 degrees centigrade. Whereas after using Ryzen controller, not only are the average temperatures lower, but the peak temperature is only about 90 degrees centigrade as you will see, which quickly drops again. So at the peak, the Ryzen controller mode is almost 9 degree cooler. And check out the scores, 3338 is one of the highest I have seen for a Ryzen 5 4600H. So not only are the temperatures lower, the scores are also better showing that the laptop is able to sustain higher boost clocks for a longer period of time. Great. Now moving on to classic Unigen Heaven at maximum settings with 8x MSAA enabled. Now I will only show a part of the benchmark because this benchmark is quite long so I will show you the end of it. Now this benchmark represents temperatures when, this, when the GPU is being pushed hard. Notice how in both cases temperatures are actually great, but you will see the differences in peak temperature as in the part of the benchmark which is a bit CPU intensive. At stock settings the laptop is peaking in between 95 degrees centigrade to 97 degrees centigrade, whereas in the Ryzen controller mode the temperatures are just fine even during peak CPU and GPU load. Just in a moment you will see. There you go, 97 degree centigrade in the stock settings, 96 degree, 94 degree, whereas in the Ryzen controller mode, temperatures will never cross 92 degree centigrade. You can see the temperatures in the stock settings is pretty high compared to the Ryzen controller. The Ryzen controller is doing a great job in maintaining low temperatures. And there you go, the final score. After using Ryzen controller, not only are the temperatures lower, but we only lost one FPS, which is margin of error stuff. Next up, 3D Mark Fire Strike. 3D Mark Firestrike is one of the most intensive graphics benchmarks for gaming laptops. And in the last two parts of the 3D Mark Firestrike benchmark, it tests both the CPU and the GPU at the same time in an intensive combined load. Once again, as you can see, the temperatures in the graphical part of the benchmark is fine for both cases. But you will see the difference in the CPU part of the benchmark. Reva tuner always takes a bit of time to appear during this CPU part, but there you can see over 100 degrees centigrade at stock settings, whereas temperatures are dropping in the case of Ryzen controller and it would keep dropping but this part is not long enough to show that effect. Now I'm not talking about real world titles guys, I'm, I'll keep that for later. But can we stop for a moment and appreciate the raw graphics performance of the RX 5600M? Over 17,000 points in stock settings and over 18,000 points using Ryzen controller, these numbers represent the raw power of the RX 5600M is even higher than the 90 watt RTX 2060. Nonetheless, in case of Ryzen controller, not only are the temperatures lower, the score is also higher, literally among the highest for a GPU for this class. Now let's take a look at Assassin's Creed Origin benchmark at very high to high settings. The reason I chose this game is because this game was one of the most unoptimized games at launch and it is notoriously CPU dependent and I wanted to see if the laptop crashes when running this game. But 
Thankfully, it did not crash even once. Now, don't pay attention to the FPS as this is one of the old builds of the game, but pay attention to the temperature difference because at points, in case of the Ryzen controller, temperatures are almost 10 degree cooler. In fact, sometimes the Ryzen controller is even more than 10 degree cooler because sometimes in the case of Ryzen controller, temperatures are below 80 degree centigrade, whereas temperatures are going over 90 degree centigrade in case of stock settings. So the Ryzen controller is definitely keeping the laptop much cooler. So at the end, you can see the FPS is almost the same. In fact, we gained one more FPS and the temperatures were even cooler. So it's a win-win to use Ryzen controller. At the end, here is a bit of a Hitman 2 gameplay at ultra settings. You can see the temperatures and the FPS, which are pretty good. The temperature is actually fine. And let me tell you, we are not using any kind of Ryzen controller in this game. As you can see, even then the temperatures are just fine. The FPS is also quite high. If you used Ryzen controller, which we used, the temperature actually fell, but I don't have the footage for that. Uh, but the temperature is just fine even without using Ryzen controller. Overall, nice frame rates and ultra settings and temperatures are also quite under control. So overall here are the recap of the results that we got. So not only after using Ryzen controller the temperatures are lower but also we got higher scores. So in my opinion Ryzen controller is the way to go with this laptop. So those were the results. What do you think? I want to repeat that these tests were done repeatedly without breaks and there were no crashes whether we used Ryzen controller or not. And whether you play for 5 minutes or 3 hours, temperatures settle in between 75 degrees centigrade to 85 degrees centigrade after about 10 minutes of gameplay. And the idle temperatures are quite low at about 39 to 45 degrees centigrade. And the laptops were under pretty hot room temperatures because no air conditioner was used. Keep in mind that these laptops come with 8 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 3200MHz RAM. So it's good for those who want out of the box dual channel performance but those people who are planning to upgrade their ram to 16 gigabytes will have to sell the provided ram many large many large open world games these days need more than 8 gigabytes of ram to run properly and definitely you need more than 8 gigabytes of ram for productivity workloads so yeah so overall i cannot speak for everybody but majority of old g5 owners have reported me that they are not facing too many problems now and i also didn't find any problems with the new 120 hertz models that i tested i tested two of them also, I cannot report on the response times of the new 120Hz panels. They are still 45% NTSC, but they are brighter than the previous panels at 250 nits. And the new panels also support FreeSync. However, Suman did say me that, that his reaction time for games like uh, PUBG has improved quite a bit after using the new 120Hz panels and he also didn't observe any kind of ghosting. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hoped you liked it. Please hit the like button and share it. It was a painstaking video for me to do and I once again want to uh, thank Anish and Suman for cooperating with me for this video. They also went through a lot of hassle, you know, setting up everything and doing all the benchmarks, recording the video, sending me, you know, there are errors in between which I have to correct and then again do the benchmarks. So a lot of hassle has gone for this video and uh, yeah, I would like to thank both of them once again. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm the Tej and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.